Today we're gonna be stressing the heck out of a Node and Express application, and we're gonna be doing this using a utility called AutoCannon on the MacBook Pro Intel Core i9 versus the MacBook Air with the M1 chip. Hey everybody, welcome back. My name is Alex. If you're new here, consider subscribing to the channel. We're doing some Apple Silicon M1 tests and I'm comparing it to the MacBook Pro from last year. This is the Intel Core i9. You can see all the specs in the description of the processor, 64 gigs of RAM. And this is the measly little MacBook Air with the M1 chip, 16 gigabytes. And a lot of the tests that I've been doing so far, it's been keeping up pretty well. Right now we're gonna be doing a test that a commenter suggested I do. Nikolai Bispalov suggested that I check how the processor behaves under stress, and he suggested I use AutoCannon. Have you used AutoCannon before? I've never used it before. What is AutoCannon? Well, it's an open source project available on GitHub and is based on WRK and WRK2. It's a benchmarking tool written in Node. If you want to check it out yourself, you can go to that URL right there. I'll post it down below too. So I've already run this on my iMac here, but I have not yet run it on either one of these machines. So this is gonna be pretty interesting for me to find out and you'll see it live here as well. I have no idea who's gonna win the test. My hunch is that the MacBook Air is gonna win. All right, so here's a little bit about AutoCannon and what it does. AutoCannon is written in JavaScript for the Node.js runtime and a CPU bound. We verified that it yields comparable results with WRK when benchmarking Node.js applications using the HTTP module. Nevertheless, it uses significant more CPU than other tools that compile to a binary like WRK. AutoCannon can saturate the CPU. Without further ado, let's get AutoCannon installed. Let's create a quick express project so we can kick up a web server real quick and we're gonna torture the heck out of it. Here I am on my MacBook Pro. I'm gonna go to the terminal and I'm gonna go to a directory here. I'm gonna create a new express application using the express generator. It's a quick little tool that lets you just create and scaffold out an express application very quickly so I don't have to build it. Create a new directory first for the project. Express proj MacBook Pro and let's go into that. Ooh. What did I do? Did I enter Vim or something? I can't get out of this. Ah, all right, fingered the wrong key and now I can't get out of it. So I'm gonna just get back in there. All right, so I've created a new directory on each one of these where I'm gonna place the project and I'm gonna execute the command npx express generator. npx of course is going to execute this command without having it globally installed. Press enter on that one. I'm gonna do the same thing here. npx express generator and that creates a brand new express project. Now I need to do the NPM installation of the packages here on both machines and we're good to go. So now we are able to kick up a new express server just by running NPM start. NPM start and NPM start. I'm just validating to make sure that the website actually kicks up and starts running. And it's supposed to run on port 3000 by default. So let's go to localhost port 3000 and there it is and I'm gonna do the same thing over here we got the Express app running on both of these machines so that means we're good to go now simultaneously I'm going to install this AutoCannon tool so I'm gonna open up a new tab in the terminal npm install global AutoCannon okay so AutoCannon also has a programmatic API that you can access I don't feel like messing with that right now I'm just gonna shoot the cannon from the command line. npm install autocannon g. Whoa, I hope it can run on this M1. It looks like it can. So we're good to go. Now all we need to do is just run autocannon and point it at the server, which is port 3000. So I'm going to do that here autocannon, and that's going to be HTTP localhost port 3000. And same thing on this one. Now, this default setting, AutoCannon is going to just execute for 10 seconds. So I'm just verifying that it's actually going to work. After this verification, I'm going to give it a certain number of times to pull the Express server. And what it does is actually shoot out a number of processes that target that URL. It basically simulates a load on the server, what it would look like if there was a ton of traffic to that server. And you can configure different things on it, like how many at the same time, how many requests per second, how 
many get requests and you can set uh, how long you want to execute it for the duration but i want to give it the number of requests that we want to shoot out that way we can see who's going to finish first and i can increase the number of requests so we can watch the processor and see the cpu load on that all right so let's go ahead and execute this one for now and this one's going to be really quick and they should both take 10 seconds because that's the default and there we go so we have a baseline this does work and it seems to be working on both of these which is good now there is a little bit of a hint right there if you take a look at the output you'll see that the macbook pro in 10 seconds was able to execute 6,000 requests 6k and the macbook air with the M1 chip, 9,000 requests in the same amount of time. That should already tell you something about the M1, and my hunch, I think, is going to be right. The M1 is probably going to be a winner in this one again. But nonetheless, I want to make a longer test, and we also want to take a look at the CPU. So let's do that. So in order to do that, I'm going to execute Auto Cannon. Then I'm going to give it the dash C parameter, which is concurrent connections. I'm going to set that to... Oh, let's make it 100. I think the default is 10. I may be wrong about that. And I want to give it the amount, dash A. That's going to give it the number of requests total. And here I'm going to set this to, let's make it 100,000. All right, same thing here. Auto cannon, dash C, 100, dash A, 100,000. And we're ready to kick things off. And I'm going to go ahead and press these at the same time so we see who finishes first. Hey, wait, wait, wait a minute now. Wait a minute. Uh, who are you? I'm your comment section. I'm here to tell you to use the time command, okay? If you're gonna be running some commands and you wanna see the, how long it takes, you use the time command, okay? Time, remember that. Yeah, okay, I know about the time command, okay? I read the comment section, time. I'll use the time command from now on, okay? Time, all right, now leave me alone. All right, we're gonna add the time command here. Thanks for that, everybody in the comments. I'm gonna prepend this with the time command. So we're gonna time it and see an actual time. But I'm also gonna press these at the same time. Ready, go. And they're off. So while that's happening, let's check out the activity monitor to see what's going on behind the scenes. So there's my activity monitor right there. We take a look at the CPU. We'll see that node is hitting 103%. Architecture is Intel, so that should tell you that we're executing under Rosetta translation. That being so, I think the MacBook with the M1 chip is still going to win, even with translation. We'll see. All right, now let's take a look at the activity monitor for the MacBook Pro. And the CPU tab is at 109%. So they're both hitting about 100%. Really utilizing that CPU to the max, which is great. And let's take a look at the terminal here. We're at 38% on the MacBook Pro. And we're at 74% here on the MacBook Air. So as you can see, the MacBook Air is actually much faster. Much, much faster than the MacBook Pro. Even though the processor on the MacBook Pro is a Core i9. You know, top of the line processor, Intel. This is the M1 processor. And even running under Rosetta, it still beats the heck out of the Core i9. It finished, we have some stats. Now we just gotta wait for the MacBook Pro to finish. Anybody know a joke? Come on, let's lighten the mood here. If you know a joke, let me know in the comments down below. All these serious comments from you folks, like this is not right, that's not right. Come on, to be accurate, you have to make an accurate test. Come on, lighten the mood a bit, folks. This is a race. You come to the race to watch who's gonna win, right? Unlike sports announcer, I just watch the clock. I don't have anything interesting to say during this time like oh macbook pro is at 99 percent and he scores okay we're done so 100,000 requests on the macbook pro took 167 seconds and on the macbook air 94 seconds so not quite twice as fast but considerably faster now auto cannon automatically reports the time and that's the time i read right there the time command also reports the time so this uh, said, I think, 2 minutes 47 seconds from the time command and 1 minute 34 seconds on the M1 MacBook Air from the time command. There you go, folks. I do have another test coming up, another JavaScript and Node-specific test. And this one has to do with executing really large algorithms. This is going to be coming up in another video shortly. So if you are interested, hit that subscribe button. And if you found this video interesting or useful or entertaining, 
I'd appreciate a thumbs up so other folks can find it as well. You know, it's for the YouTube algorithm and it also helps me get more views and therefore helps me bring more videos like this one to you. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.